Welcome back to the three months of modal logic, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with CurrentDeities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with epistemic logic, looking at objections to Hintika's semantics. If you haven't checked out the previous video on Hintika's semantics, this video may be a little confusing to you, so I would highly encourage you to check out Doxastic and Epistemic Semantics, which comes just before this video in our series. But if you have checked out that video or you just are really familiar with Hintika's semantics, let's get started. So, at the end of the last video, we offered two definitions of knowledge and belief. So, Agent S believes P in world I if and only if P is true for all worlds doxastically accessible to I for S. And Agent S knows that P in world I if and only if P is true in all worlds epistemically accessible to I for S. So basically what we're saying is some agent believes that some proposition in some particular world if and only if for all of those worlds that are compatible with the beliefs of S in world I, P is true. Okay? Hopefully that's clear. If it's not, watch the previous video. So, Antique is going to run into several problems with his definition. The objection I'm going to outline here is that the position implies that it's impossible to believe that any non-classical logic and not believe that all propositions are true. So it's impossible to believe in any non-classical logic and not believe that all propositions are true. Now, I could offer other objections from kind of a skeptical position of saying that, oh, the skeptic doesn't have any beliefs, so the skeptic's beliefs are compatible with all possible worlds, and in fact, the skeptic believes everything, or doesn't believe anything, or believes the laws of logic. There's other objections I could pose here, but because there's admittedly debate as to whether the skeptic can not have any beliefs, we're going to take a little bit of a different route and talk about people that believe that non-classical logic is true, because it seems to me that we all would accept that there are people that don't believe the laws of logic are true. This doesn't make the laws of logic false, but it seems that there are people that are proponents of non-classical logic and that this doesn't force them to believe all propositions. All right? That didn't make sense. We're going to go over it several more times in different ways. So let's take a look. Imagine that Bill believes that the law of non-contradiction is false, as many people, not all, but many, that accept non-classical logics do. Note that this does not, in fact, break the law of non-contradiction. People can and do believe that the laws of logic are false. Imagine further that Bill does not believe he's on Mars. You can plug in anything for that. That Bill does not believe that he's a gigantic Tyrannosaurus bent on eating the world. That Bill doesn't believe that he can stop time by blinking. Whatever you want, as long as Bill does not have some belief. There exists some proposition such that Bill does not believe it. this argument will work. It seems that by simply denying the law of non-contradiction, not actually having that be the case in the world, in fact, for, by force having the law of non-contradiction be in effect in the world in all possible worlds, but someone in one of those possible worlds believing that the law of non-contradiction is false, we're going to have a contradiction so long as that person doesn't believe all possible propositions. So, since the law of non-contradiction is necessary or true in all possible worlds, there will be no world that's compatible with Bill's beliefs. Since for all possible worlds, there's at least some proposition such that one of Bill's beliefs implies that proposition is not true, namely the law of non-contradiction, which is true in all possible worlds, and Bill's belief says it isn't. So, Bill's beliefs are compatible with no possible worlds. This will mean that all propositions are going to be vacuously true in all possible worlds compatible with Bill's beliefs, since there are no possible worlds compatible with Bill's beliefs. Because there are no worlds that are compatible with Bill's beliefs, any proposition is vacuously true in all possible worlds that are compatible with Bill's beliefs. Okay? If you didn't understand that, check out my video on vacuous truth. This, in turn, means that Bill believes all propositions, which is problematic, since we said that he does not believe that he is on Mars. Might have been a little confusing. We're going to make it a little more structured with premises and conclusion, and then we're going to put it in official logical language to see how we use some of these concepts, and actually the interaction between doxastic ideas and alethic modal ideas. 
So, first off, Bill believes that the law of non-contradiction is false. If you think that there are people that believe in a type of non-classical logic like this, you should accept premise one. Premise two, Bill does not believe that he is on Mars. So once again, you can put anything in for this so long as Bill does not believe blank. Premise three, from premise two, Bill does not believe all propositions. Premise four, Bill's beliefs are not compatible with any possible world. That's from premise one. So, from premise 4, no worlds are doxastically accessible to Bill. Premise 6, all propositions are vacuously true in all worlds doxastically accessible to Bill. From 5, since there are no worlds that are doxastically accessible to Bill. Therefore, from 6, Bill believes all propositions. Therefore, Bill both does and does not believe all propositions from a conjunction of 3 and 7. Therefore, because we've arrived at a contradiction, either Bill does not actually believe the law of non-contradiction is false, or he actually believes that he's on Mars. We have to deny one of our premises, or deny one of the laws of logic that got us here. For my money, it seems best to deny Hintiga semantics, but as the problem of underdetermination has showed us, we are not determined as to which one of these things we should deny. Let's take a look at this logically. So we're going to do an assumed indirect proof. We're going to assume that Bill believes that the law of non-contradiction is false or that there exists some P such that P and not P is the case in world I. And it's not the case that Bill believes that he is on Mars in world I. We draw our line going down for our assumed indirect proof. So we're going to simplify that to basically Bill believes the law of non-contradiction is false. Then, using our definition of belief, we're going to say that for all worlds W, I bears the doxastic accessibility relation to W for Bill implies that there exists some P such that P and not P in world W. Now, what we're going to do in the next couple lines is show that the law of non-contradiction is true in all possible worlds, basically. So first, We'll use our necessitation rule from Alethic modal logic and law of non-contradiction to show that it's not the case. There exists some P such that P and not P. Next, we'll use kind of a definition of necessity or necessary that moves from kind of our box Q to the subscript notation of world. So basically, for all Q, Q being necessary, even only if for all possible worlds, Q is true in those worlds seems to make sense with our understandings of those two concepts. Now, if we then universally instantiate premise 5 to Q being the law of non-contradiction, we're going to get this, then using equivalence and simplification, we'll get this implication that basically, if the law of non-contradiction is necessary, that implies that for all worlds, it's the case that the law of non-contradiction is true. By modus ponens, we get, for all worlds, it's the case of the law of non-contradiction. Universal instantiation gets us, it's not the case that there exists some P such that P and not P in a particular world X. We can then also universally instantiate premise 3 to the same world X. And using modus tollens, we'll get, it's not the case that there's any world I that's doxastically accessible to Bill. And with addition and implication, this is kind of the vacuously true part of it, we get that for all worlds, in fact, I and X, if Bill is in I, for all worlds X, Y is true in X, for anything. Universal generalization enforces this. So for all worlds such that I bears the doxastic accessibility relation to W for Bill, that implies that Y is true, that anything is true. And we can go ahead and use belief definition to basically say that Bill believes any Y, or for all Y, Bill believes that, that Y by universal generalization. We'll continue our indirect proof here, saying there exists some X such that it's not the case that Bill believes that X from all the way back in premise 1 simplification and existential instantiation. That's saying that there is something that Bill believes. Change of quantifier will get us. It's not the case that for all X, Bill believes that X, and therefore we have a contradiction because it's not the case that Bill believes that all X, but for all Y, Bill believes that Y. 
Hopefully that makes sense. 15, 17 conjunctions. So in conclusion, we can deny our original assumption. So either Bill secretly believes that classical logic is the case, or he secretly believes that he is on Mars. And in fact, every other pro possible proposition is true. Even if you think that classical logic is correct, you must agree that there are people that do disagree and deny one part or another of classical logic. According to Hintika, such people believe all propositions, necessarily. It should be clear that these definitions also assume things like logical omnip omniscience. Since all logical truths are true in all possible worlds, everyone not only believes all possible truths, logical truths, but knows them. This seems concerning when there are many people that seem to disagree as to which axioms of logic are in fact true. It's quite counterintuitive to claim that all such disagreements are fake, since everyone, by definition, knows the real truths of logic. We'll talk a little bit more about logical omniscience in a later video. There are other concerns that can be leveled against this position relating to justification and implicit beliefs, but for the time being, we're going to move on to a better understanding of the syntax of these systems. Up next, Axiom K in Doxastic and Epistemic Logic. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.